Make sense? I know a lot of you want to go to spiritual places. I want you. I know a lot of you want to embark on opening up a, a healing center, a nonprofit organization. You want to help your relatives, your friends. You want to buy more spiritual books. You want to attend classes. Guess what? They ain't free. They're not free. You know why? Because all those endeavors that you want, in order for those to happen, whoever is re leading that retreat, writing that book, uh, teaching this course, whatever, all those people have expenses. <laughs> if you're attending a church, in order to keep that church going, to pay for electricity, they have to have funding. Make sense? So that's why when people tell me, oh, spirituality, money corrupts and all that, I go, I don't want to talk to this person. They're wasting my time. Because purely, uh, clearly, they don't have a clear understanding how the world works. They think spirituality, well, it's spirit, everything is free. Yeah, right. Who's going to feed the preacher's family? Who's going to preach? Who's going to pay for the electricity for that ashram to run? On prana? Yeah, right. So when you have a deep understanding, you go, oh, okay, okay. So it's important for me to make sure my finances are in order. So that it will give me, listen to this carefully, money gives you the freedom to pursue things that are permanent. Let me do it again. Everything that you can touch is impermanent. True? Even your physical body, no matter how healthy you make it and so on and so on, it has a certain lifespan. One day it'll disappear. You'll die. Anything you earn, money, fame, and everything else that you have, it's not permanent. So what's permanent is your spiritual development and your existence as a spiritual self, the soul. So, let's put it all together. So the smart thing to do, the way my teacher understood it is, you take things that are impermanent, like money, like whatever it is that you, in this earthly life, you take that impermanent stuff and somehow convert it to something spiritual that is yours permanently. Oh, that's deep, man. Okay, it's not really that deep. It's obvious. So, you make money. You make sure your finances are in order. So you use that as a stepping stone so you can use that money to now pay for a trip to the Himalayas. Now, if you're dead broke, you can't do that. Right? Or you take that money that you make and you use it to what? To so start a healing a healing practice. Or you take that money to open up a spiritual center. So you're using what is immaterial to give you something that's permanent. Genius. So you don't have to feel guilty about being rich and prosperous because for you, being rich, rich and prosperous is essentially a means to an end. Ta-da! Done. So that part of guilt, of fear of success, right? Think about it. A lot of people who are very spiritual, they're afraid of, well, I don't know, if I become so rich and prosperous or whatever, I might become obsessed with the money or the success, then I would not be on my spiritual path anymore. Hello? Let's break it down. That is a choice you make because you allowed it to entangle you. But as long as your spiritual target is clear, this is what I want to do. This is my objective, to serve more people, to feed hungry people, to open up spiritual centers, to help people who are in need. Then the money, the prosperity is nothing more than a means to an end. Make sense? And here's the beauty of the entire thing, if you haven't gotten it yet. I think most of you got it already. You get to be comfortable in your life. You get to experience good things in life, right? You have, you're able to give your family a good life, and you're able to have spiritual fulfillment. What the hell? What else do you want? Isn't that heaven and earth? Did that hit you yet? Because when my teacher explained it, go, he's right. <laughs> he's right. I get to have a good life. I get to be comfortable. And I get to serve. <laughs> I 
whoever said spirituality is you have to suffer to be spiritual. Yeah, but you know, I know, I know a lot of yogis, but you know, they're spiritual and they're not interested in money. That is a choice their soul made. Yeah, I know missionaries, you know, they, they forsake everything <clears throat> so they can go out and serve people. Great, go for it. Who's supporting them? Hello? <laughs> right? These yogis, these monks, these missionaries, they go out and spread the good word, spirituality and everything. They don't have to work. They don't have to make money because their organizations are support them. Hello, these organizations, how are they going to do it? Put it out of thin air? They have to do fundraising. Uh-huh. I think this is too direct for you, right? <laughs> That's the way that my teacher teaches. This is your objective. Money, prosperity, the good things in life, it's a means to get there. That's not finished. Now, let's bring it down to the basics. This sounds ridiculous, but I think all of you can relate. When you're doing your meditation, you want to experience stillness. Inner peace, emotional calmness, oneness with God, oneness with all. Fantastic. Go for it. How are you going to do that if you're worrying about money? Hmm? You got to be, okay, inner peace, stillness. But part of it is, how am I going to pay my bills? How am I going to do this and that? How much inner peace are you going to have when you're worrying the entire time? Isn't it obvious? I know some of you going, this is too much, it's too forceful. Well, find another teacher. I don't <laughs> I don't like sugar coating. Because you sugar coat, you enable you enabling the student's inability to act. You're basically babysitting. Oh, it's okay to feel this poverty consciousness. It makes you feel spiritual. Hello. Don't you think when they break through that, they can serve more people, they can fulfill their spiritual whatever target they have earlier. I know what it's like. Because when I was in my teacher before, I have all these thoughts in my head. To be spiritual, you have to be suffering. The more you suffer, the more you're loved by God. Because, uh, what is it? that The poor person is the one going to heaven. is the rich person who is barbecuing in hell. And if you had that thought, you watch movies, it's always the bad guy. The rich guy is the bad guy. It's the, the person who's suffering, who's so darn poor, and then so-and-so. They're the lovely spiritual person. Mm -hmm. Okay, if that's really true, who's going to print spiritual books? Who, who will have the resources to put together an organization that supports all these hungry people? Spiritually hungry and financially hung, uh, food hungry. Uh, someone who's, <laughs> what do you call this? Someone who's broke is not going to be able to help people who are broke. Did you realize that? Every spiritual organization that's able to help so many people is well funded. So the key is to understand money as what it is. It's essentially a tool, an instrument, for you to fulfill your spiritual destiny, to bring out the goodness within you. If you have that in your mind the entire time, then money cannot corrupt you because you realize this, all it is is a tool. The minute it becomes an obsession, then you're screwed. Then that's it. Then you're absolutely right. You don't want to be successful because it'll pull you off your spiritual path. That's it. Crazy simple. Now, I'm sharing this with you before we do the healing because if we just do healing, remove these thoughts and emotions, energies out of your aura and your chakras, and it's just a bandage job. Yeah, all this poverty consciousness, now oh, it's out of my aura, I feel more prosperous, I feel good into it. But if that basic premise or the concept that you have in your mind that money is something that will pull you away from the spiritual path, if that's not resolved within you, nothing, no healing will help you. You realize that? Because healing is removing the negative thoughts, negative energies, the blockages. Okay, you remove it. That's great. But who's stopping you from, what's stopping you from recreating it again? 
So poverty consciousness have to be understood as what it is. It's twofold. One is the basic belief system of that person. And number two, based on that belief system, what kind of thoughts and emotions are actually enveloping the aura and their chakras? Because as they perceive the world, they're perceiving the world through this lens or this windshield or windscreen. These are the thoughts and emotions of how they perceive money. So one is the belief system, that has to be corrected. And number two, the effect of these thoughts, of these beliefs, what is it doing? Is it a cloud of thoughts and emotions that constantly remind them, oh, money is bad, it's going to hurt them in their spiritual path? Or is it something that gives them proper understanding? Look, money is nothing more than something that allows me to reach my goal. So when we do healing, a big part of it is what? Cleaning out this lens, cleaning out this windshield, windscreen. Okay, I can see clearly. Then, immediately, you have to have the person understand, okay, I'm not going to recreate those negative thoughts again because money is nothing more than a tool that will help me achieve my goals. That's not finished. Then you move forward. Clear? So that's why we took the time to explain that part to you. And I think most of you got it. Now we go to the healing process. Now, to make you understand it a little better, when you, call, when you talk about the healing process, when it comes to money and prosperity, there are patterns there are patterns of a person who's prosperous. There are patterns of people who are not prosperous. And there are patterns of people who have poverty consciousness. You say, is that really possible? Yeah, haven't you noticed that a rich person has a way to deal with certain situations? And a person who is, let's just say, have poverty consciousness has a way to deal with certain situations? A person who's prosperous... It's prosperity, prosperity thinking. When they have an obstacle or a challenge, they go, okay, okay, what is going on here? Uh, what is the solution? How do we fix this? A person who has poverty consciousness, what do they do? They go, yeah, you know, story of my life. <laughs> right? Or they go, yeah, you know, I screwed up before. It's happening again. Do you see the difference? It's the default of their consciousness. So guess what happens? One person will say, Hmm, how do I fix this? How do I make the most out of this? The other person, oh man, I'm dead. That's why I always go back to the same quote that um, some of you gave me the right person who, who, who said it. I, I heard it from my daughter's graduation. One of the people said it on stage. Oh, that's a good one. So you have a big rock in front of you, an obstacle. It could be a stumbling block or a stepping stone. So if you have an obstacle, whether it's a stumbling block that makes you stop or fall, right? Or is it a stepping stone, as in you can use that to go even higher, is dependent on one thing and one thing alone. How high you raise your foot. Do you understand that? If you have a, if you have a rock in front of you, in your, uh, something in your way, if it's a stumbling block or a stepping stone, depends on how high you raise your foot. So, if you have a person who has poverty consciousness, they look at it, they don't even raise their foot, they go, I'm screwed. But if a person has prosperity, prosperity consciousness, they go, oh, really? I want to go up there. Great, now I have something to step on as a springboard to go even higher. Same rock, same foot, different attitude. Which one is it for you? Now, it's not just about money. It's about spirituality, about relationships, health, everything. It's about attitude. You know, you always hear about... You, know, you have a glass. Is the glass half full, half... Okay, half full or half empty? The pessimist will say, it's half empty. And then you have the optimist that says, it's half full. Of course, you see memes about this. And people, the third person will laugh at both of you and go, what's wrong with you two? You're arguing with whether the glass is half full or half empty. You forgot, regardless, it's refillable. <laughs> Fill it up. Why waste your time arguing? Uh, it's full. No, it's empty. Hello, just fill it up. Make sense? It all boils down to what? What your attitude is. 
And since all of you, I'm assuming, have a higher goal, a bigger destiny, then you say, all right, whatever's happening in my life, I can change it, I can make it better. Done deal, finished, no more argument. Make sense? So, we're gonna do this now, we'll do the meditation, and just make sure all these things are working. Okay? And then afterwards, the basic chakra, the base of your spine, is the chakra that regulates and control the way you think about money and prosperity and productivity. So we're, we're going to use this crystal, basically. Okay, don't get too... Oh, it's a crystal. This is nothing more than something to aim the healing energy. That's it. It looks impressive, though, huh? Okay. Shall we? To the Divine Supreme God, Divine Father, Mother, to all the spiritual elders, holy masters, saints, archangels, holy angels, and spiritual helpers, personally to my teacher, Master Chokok Sui, Mahaguru Jumailing, we thank you for divine light, divine love. Thank you for your guidance, help, healing, and divine protection. We thank you in full faith. And so it is. All right, when you're ready, we'll do a short uh, meditation twin hearts as taught to us by my teacher, Grandmaster Tsokok Sui. So take your left hand, tap the center of your chest, take your right hand, tap your crown, put your hand like this, visualize the earth in front of you, repeat after me, our hearts are one, our souls are one, our spirits are one. And in this oneness, we humbly ask to be utilized as instruments and channels to bless the entire earth. So be aware of your heart, be aware of your hands, fill the earth with beautiful pink light. Start by filling your family with beautiful pink light. Bless your family with peace and with love. And let it spread to the city, the state, the country. Let it fill the entire earth. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Wherever there's hatred anywhere in the world, let me sow love. Let my soul be filled with peace and love. Let every person, every being be blessed with peace and love. Where there's injury, let me sow pardon and forgiveness. Where there's doubt, let me sow faith. Where there's despair, let me sow hope. Please recall or think of people you know going through challenging and difficult times. <clears throat> it could be with their health, with their relationships, it could be their finances. Visualize their lives improving and fill them with beautiful pink light. Bless them with hope and with faith in a better life. So be it. So be it. May all be blessed. Where there's darkness, let me sow light. And where there's sadness, let me sow joy. Just be aware of your heart, your hands. Fill the earth with beautiful pink light. May every person, every being be blessed with peace, with love with the spirit of forgiveness and reconciliation, with hope and with faith, with light and joy, so be it. So be it, and so it is. Now be still, <clears throat> be still and just flood the earth with beautiful pink light. Keep your tongue on the roof of your mouth. Now be aware of your heart, take a deep breath. Be aware of your crown, exhale, and stay there. Your crown is filled with so much golden light. Let that golden light from your crown flow down through your hands and fill the entire earth. Bless your family with golden light, your relatives, your friends the country you live in, the continent, and let it keep spreading throughout the entire earth. Just say, our souls are one, our spirits are one. There's only oneness. Be aware of your crown, from the heart of God, through my soul, through my entire being, 
May every person, every being on earth be blessed with love and kindness. Let my soul be filled with love and kindness. Let every person, every being on earth be blessed with great joy and happiness, with understanding, harmony, and divine peace. May all be blessed with peace, with love, with kindness, with joy, and with peace. So be it. Blessings be to all. And just be still. Just be aware of your crown. Be aware of your heart and your hands. Take a deep breath. Exhale and project even brighter light, brighter golden light towards the entire earth. Just be still. From the center of the heart of all loving God, through my soul, through my entire being, may every person, every being on earth be blessed with love and kindness. Let all be blessed with inner peace and inner healing. Let all be blessed with understanding, with harmony, goodwill, and the willingness to do good. May all be blessed without exception. So be it. You just keep your tongue on the roof of your mouth. Just be still and let the blessings flow through us. May all be blessed. Just be still. Maintain your stillness and awareness. Keep your eyes closed. Gently lower your hands. On top of your head, imagine a beautiful golden star. Just a miniature sun was so bright, just floating above your head. The image doesn't have to be clear. Just know it's there. Now be aware of the love within your heart. Send a stream of love from your heart up, up to your crown and into that golden sun. Ah. Stay there. Just allow your attention to gently drift deeper and deeper into that golden sun, that beautiful golden light. Be still. Let's take you higher. Om. still allow your awareness and consciousness to just simply drift deeper and deeper into that golden light any sound any noise you hear 
will just allow you to drift deeper into the inner stillness and that inner peace. And just simply let go. Let things be and let things happen on its own. Now. Let go. Maintain your stillness. Just be aware of your body. Be aware of the energy flowing through your body. You don't have to visualize anything, just be aware of it. You will focus all this cleansing energy on the base of your spine. Just be still. The liquid divine energy is pouring down to your entire body. It's going to your crown, your forehead, your ajna chakra, your throat, your front back heart, front back solar plexus, navel, sex, and basic chakra at the base of your spine. You're under waterfall of brilliant, brilliant light. Any negative thoughts, negative energies in your crown chakras are disintegrated, extracted, expelled to the nearest salt water or violet fire to you. Your crown chakra is cleansed. The Ajna Chakra in between your eyebrows are being cleansed. All negative thoughts and energies, any fear of success, thought forms are dissolved, disintegrated, extracted, expelled to the nearest salt water or violet fire to you. The liquid divine energy is pouring down to your throat center. Your throat chakras are being cleansed. Any worries about money are dissolved, disintegrated, extracted, expelled to the nearest salt water now or violet fire. The liquid divine energy is pouring down into your front and back soul plexus, going deep into your front and back soul plexus. Any worries about money, about prosperity, are dissolved, disintegrated, extracted, expelled in near salt water or violet fire to you. So be it. Just be still. Just let it happen. <clears throat> the liquid divine energy is pouring down, down to your navel, down your spine to your basic chakra. The liquid divine energy is pouring deep, deep into your basic chakra, dissolving, disintegrating any poverty, consciousness, thoughts, any fears of success and fear of failure are dissolved, disintegrated, fully extracted, externalized to the near salt water of violet fire to you now. Just be receptive. You don't have to do anything. Just allow it to happen. <clears throat> Just let things go and listen. Om 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 Om
get this thing, all this thing, tossing of emotion, this thing, get cut. Just be still. Well, poverty consciousness, thoughts, emotions, energies, either self-generate or, or from outside are dissolved, disintegrated, extract, expelled out of the aura now. So be it. Just be still, let it absorb. From the center of the heart of God, may all of you be blessed with abundance and prosperity and the wisdom to use it properly. To improve your life, the lives of your loved ones, and to be of service to the world, so be it. May your basic chakra be blessed with abundance and prosperity. Om Maha Lakshmi Vidmahe Vishnu Priyaye Dimahi Tanno Lakshmi Prachodayat Om Just be still. God's blessings of prosperity, abundance, good health, and spiritual connection be with all of you, so be it. May all of you be blessed. Just be still. Now repeat after me. I completely, deeply, permanently, and gratefully. Again, I completely, deeply, permanently, and gratefully accept, absorb, fully assimilate all the divine blessings of abundance and prosperity and spirituality, so be it. So be it, and so it is. Now be still. Let it assimilate. Raise your hands. Let's share this love with every person, every being on earth. So visualize your family, your friends, all the people you love. Put them in front of you. Fill them all with golden light. May all of them be blessed with good health, with happiness, with prosperity, and with spirituality. So be it. So be it. And so it is. Now be aware of your feet and the base of your spine, project golden light deep into the earth, and repeat after me. Let our beloved Mother Earth be blessed with divine light, divine love, and divine power. Let our beloved Mother Earth be healed, regenerated, and revitalized. Blessings be to Mother Earth. So be it. So be it. And so it is. Let's give thanks to the Divine Supreme God, Divine Father, Mother. Thank you to all the spiritual elders, holy masters, saints, archangels, holy angels, and spiritual helpers. And thank you wherever you like. To my beloved teacher, Master Tokok Sui, Mahagu Jumeiling, thank you. In full faith, and so it is. Okay, open your eyes. How do you feel? Everybody okay? So just kind of think of some of your money worries. How is it now compared to before? Some of you go, well, it's blank. That's the idea. So we explained a little bit to you, so at least cognitively you understand. We disintegrate these negative thoughts and emotions. So moving forward, be aware. Listen carefully. Be aware. You create your thoughts. You create your emotions according to the destination you had in mind. That's it. Very simple. You go, yeah, but you know, I know people who are very negative. They dump stuff at me. Then don't react. You say, oh, okay, okay, that's your thought, not mine. 
Okay, don't say it verbally. They're going to get upset. Just kind of, oh, okay, okay. You know, like I say, instead of namaste, you say namaste go. <laughs> all right, don't say that. They're going to get upset. Anyway, all right. So I wish all of you a fantastic weekend. Uh, just a quick announcement. The ones who were with us last night for the introduction to panic healing, it's still available. You're welcome to watch it as many times as you like. And the ones who don't know what the heck I'm talking about, there's a link over there. Just go back to it. Um, it's free, it doesn't cost you anything. So you understand, you know, the stuff we're doing about chakras and aura, it's an introductory class. And we go to a short self-healing part of it also. And the ones who wants to pursue it further, uh, we have certified instructors here in the United States. There's a link there. And then for the rest of you outside the United States, I also put links there for you to go to your nearest panic healing center, learn the technique. I mean, that's my foundation. That's what I know. And it's transformed my life and the lives of many. So... That's that. And on Sunday, this coming Sunday evening, uh, we're having uh, introductory, again, free introductory class on advanced pranic healing and pranic psychotherapy, how to use the power of colors, and how to use this energy to distinguish a lot of thoughts that do not serve you. That's pranic psychotherapy. That's this Sunday night. Uh, but in order to go there, you have to first <laughs> attend the, the free introductory class to pranic healing. Otherwise, it's just like going to college without taking <laughs> elementary school. Okay. Anyway, the information is there. Just go to masterco.org. Everything is there. Click, follow, type, and whatever else. All right. All of you have a fantastic, wonderful weekend. Uh, we wish you much happiness and joy. And the ones who are um, in Asia, in Australia, let me get this right, Asia, certain parts of Australia, Singapore, Malaysia, New Zealand, uh, this Sunday, which is Sunday your time, we're having Omani Padmi Home. So if you haven't registered yet, go to uh, some link. <laughs> I go to Global Pranic Healing. I think that's what the name of it is. It's sponsored by the, the mother organization. Okay, so I'll be teaching that. Um, and it's on the mantra Omani Padmi Home. And uh, based on this book by my teacher. Okay. I know some of you say, yeah, how about the U.S., Europe, and all that? Uh, those to be scheduled later. And besides, there are other masters that teach on those areas. I'm just yeah, one of them. Okay? Namaste, everyone. You all take care. We wish you much happiness and joy. And I want all of you to be super prosperous. <laughs> okay? Namaste. Take care. Bye-bye.